So there's one missing uh, ingredient at a time that we've been addressing from technology perspective, but there's also one from societal perspective. I'm going to talk about two, which uh, will give a lot of optimism for people around that the Internet of AI is uh, coming. Uh, what do we mean by Internet of AI? Do you guys know the Internet of Homo sapien? Raise a hand. It's effectively the Internet, okay? So you probably know it. Um, so for AI agents to talk to each other, um, there's been few missing ingredients. In fact, it's been described in 1983 with Marvin Minsky. How many of you know Marvin Minsky? Raise a hand. It's kind of like more like the actual godfather of artificial intelligence. So um, here we're going to talk about, uh, as of now, AI learns from us more than we learn from AI, and you pr pretty much know that. Uh, and uh, what does that mean? Well, a better version of you is in the making. Whether you like it or not, or people at, like the regulators, they're going to say, yes, no, we're going to allow it or not. It's in the making anyway. So, uh, but the question is, will you own yourself? Will your children own themselves? That's pretty much the questions people should need to ask and not like, should we allow it or not? It's happening. So uh, what's next? Uh, now, uh, the cool thing is like, uh, you're, you're not the only one that there's a better copy of yourself is in the making. It, pretty much every single homo sapien, there's a better copy of them. And uh, the cool thing about uh, AI that it can process everybody at the exact same time and it can actually get them to talk to each other at the exact same time. Currently, um, what, you, how many of you know, you know Yuval Noah Harari read the book Sapiens, his end? All right, uh, I highly recommend this book. It effectively talks about the reason why we govern this planet is because of our cooperative level and not individual level. At the individual level, many Homo sapiens, like yourself, would feel that you are a little bit more special, better than a lot of other animals. But it turns out you're not special. Uh, so sorry to break it out to you. Um, our cooperative level is what makes us special. So imagine a better version of yourself, and it's much better cooperating in the fractions of seconds, they're able to talk to almost every other better version of everybody. Just imagine working that go. So um, let's examine first where we are. Um, the ability to have the smallest component of an AI engine collaborating with a other stranger component uh, was currently not possible without intermediary third party. So many people, they say, well, why don't you use a blockchain? Well, blockchain is a third party. <laughs> I mean, it used to be not a third party with Bitcoin until 2011. It was truly peer-to-peer. -peer. But every single blockchain today is a third party between one person and another, which can work very well for people. We already have a lot of proofs that can work a lot of better than banks, for example, in most instances. But for AI, it doesn't have the time nor the bandwidth of cost to have that third party in the middle. It doesn't like third party. It takes a lot of time. So uh, that missing ingredient has been reviewed about a year and a half ago. Um, and the first time was talked about two and a half years ago at the AGI Summit. How many of you have heard of AGI, Artificial General Intelligence? So the next step in AI is to get to AGI before we get to ASI. Some people don't like the term. It's okay, they can replace it with any other term that they like. But the reality is that there's a moment in time when you can ask the machine, what does it take to get you to evolve yourself? And if that machine responds back to you that it doesn't need any homo sapien, it just needs time and resources. We refer to that as AGI. From that point onwards, 
it's likely to get to ASI, ASI artificial super intelligence. Currently, ASI is more artificial simulated intelligence, but we're talking about truly super intelligence where you have intelligence a lot uh, better than the entire humanity combined. By how many times, if you have a machine that is smarter than all humanity combined, well, if it's a little bit better today, tomorrow it can be 10 times better, the day after it can be 100 times, and so on and so forth. Now, of course, if you imagine a single entity controlling this thing, um, you probably will start thinking of a lot of uh, scenarios of uh, you know, dystopia. Um, but we're, we're going to make sure that it's not going to happen. It's probably going to be the entire internet of AI that's going to get there first. So um, I, I usually start talking who am I or whatnot. But if any of you would like to connect, feel free. You can scan this uh, QR code, or you can just hit me up on LinkedIn. How many of you are familiar with IEEE, the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers? Amazing. It's the largest in the world, 400,000 members globally. Um, it pretty much sets most of the standards. If you were to take your phone and look inside it, there's lots of IEEE standards or whatnot. What I've elected to do for the IEEE is the International Protocols for AI Security, because it needs to be inclusive to everyone, and it should not serve a single country, it should not serve a single religion, it should not serve a single company. But I was the first in the world, by the way, to talk about AI decentralized in 2013. A lot of people thought, this guy's crazy. I mean, they still think, rightfully so, but uh, 2016 ACM pretty much voted me into kind of tell the world ACM. How many of you have been with ACM? Association for Computing Machinery, number one computer science in the world, 100,000 members. Anyway, so we started telling the world about the AI decentralized, and with that, of course, you can see there's a huge movement right now, so we no longer tell the story, we're actually doing it. So this is a bit about IEEE. Hypercycle is what we're doing it. We're no longer waiting for somebody to do it. It's uh, effectively, um, you know, uh, in your brain, there are a lot of neurons. The way those neurons talk to each other or in your body, they use this thing called synapses. Those synapses, they don't really check with any third party every time they're relaying communication. They do it truly peer-to-peer. -peer. Effectively, that's what hypercycle does to neurons or any AI. Um, so anybody who's building AI, they kind of like this because it enables AI to make a little bit more money every fraction of a second in every single installation, every single instance. People like money. The other thing is it allows, uh, because it enables AI to talk to another AI, uh, there's this thing called emergence when you have one AI talking to another AI. If it doesn't know the answer to something, then it's perhaps reaching out to another AI to get that answer. Um, and sometimes even if both they know the answer with 80% accuracy, when you combine them together, you get a little bit higher because it's not necessarily the same accuracy, you know, and due to emergence, you can get superior level of intelligence. So that's basically the future of AI and a lot of uh, um, people think that they can't stop it. They can't stop it. It's happening. But it's perhaps better to kind of partake into it, especially if they uh, want their AI to get smarter or they want uh, to make a little bit more money. Uh, so the two missing ingredients before my existence on this planet is, uh, one is like the AI network was not possible, which I talked about, and we use Toda IP. I am the author of Toda IP. Uh, when I was at the AGI summit, a lot of AI scientists, they were thinking the multi-agent system is not possible because it's been tried many times. And that's because that connector membrane or synapsis was not possible when we brought it to the IP. But there is another component is from game theory perspective. If you were to just like put it in, you would think, okay, well, this is going to work. Um, not really. If you were to look at existing systems like banks versus blockchains, they can continue fighting that fight. Who's going to win the fight? Um, I mean, 
good luck for either one of them. I'm not interested anymore. <laughs> Uh, but I think the future is more enabling AI to talk to AI, and this is what we owe to future generation and our children, and we really think that if that brain is not controlled by a single entity, it's probably better for the future. So it is a very good mission for everyone. Yet, in the same time, from game theory perspective, it enables every single AI to make a little bit more money so they feel they want to be part of that Internet of AI. They, they don't want to deprive their AI from the Internet of AI. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, reasons of why you would want to be on the internet. The same thing, you should not deprive your AI from having access to that. So, so yeah, so we started building it, and uh, so far we've been progressing across uh, the globe. And uh, we started by selling a lot of software nodes, but those nodes are more like the connectors. We use the vast majority of the revenue to invest in a lot of companies. We currently invested in 15. Some of them are here. If any of you are here, like raise a hand under the Hyper Ring or the Hyper Appliance or PG or whatnot. Um, the reason why we invest in companies that mainly in hardware that they can partake into uh, the Internet of AI because we truly believe uh, that every single Homo sapien should be able to partake in becoming provider of AI. Otherwise, if you look at a lot of AI companies out there, uh, they use uh, the you and your children as to be the product, or you, they use it to be like the, you know, uh, basically the customer, but perhaps enabling each and every homo sapien to partake in providing AI is a great mission to everyone, and from game theory perspective, it seems that it works because people, they like to, you know, uh, make money, so that's what the two ingredients that we feel will bring it to the equation. And uh, we invite everyone who is building uh, AI to partake in the Internet of AI to not restrict their AI from being confined to a single uh, center. We, uh, we're agnostic, whether it is a centralized AI or a decentralized, we're open to both to let them to collaborate with each other. And we're hoping with that collaboration, we can, all of us as Homo sapiens, get to AGI and ASI next. For those that are not convinced for societal reason, you can think of what the most prediction that the future wealth creation is likely to be in the quadrillions. So maybe that's perhaps a better incentive and that's what we're building. Thank you very much for having me.